Our medical expert, Dr. Cedric McFadden, is joining us today. We're going to talk a little bit about the hope side of things. As we hear those death numbers, it's always so depressing, you know, to hear that. But the hope is that as this progresses, we will learn to treat it better and learn things along the way. We keep hearing about treatments for COVID-19, Dr. C, and the options. Uh, what about uh, drugs? Do we have drugs that help get a better outcome? So we, we, we don't have any FDA-approved drugs specifically for COVID-19. Uh, what we have at present is treatments that will help support the patient, supplemental oxygen, and when necessary, mechanical ventilation. Uh, there are no, there's an array of new investigational drugs, uh, and there are some medications that we've used for other purposes that we're now finding in clinical trials to see if it's supportive in treating these patients. And we've heard a couple of big names, <laughs> yeah. hydrochloroquine and chloroquine as yes. drugs that are kind of talked about a lot, a lot of getting a lot of headlines. Correct. The president's mentioned them. Right. Um, this is an interesting opportunity to treat these folks, but what do we know about those drugs and how effective they are? So they've been around for some time, treating conditions from malaria to even uh, inflammatory conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis or even lupus. Uh, but what we don't have is any really conclusive definitive evidence on them. They did, again, get a lot of popularity and notoriety recently when they were mentioned during a recent presidential press conference. But we do know that there can be some heart trouble with people who already have liver disease or even kidney disease. So we're still going through a lot of investigational tr uh, tr uh, strategies around them, but the FDA is allowing an emergency use for certain patients with severe disease. And the, the unfortunate thing, though, for some of those patients that do count on those drugs is that it's kind of messed with the supply chain, right? So and that's that is a mess. the concern is that there may be a mad rush for the use of those medications. So, yeah, we'll watch that one closely. What about the vaccine? We always are hearing about the vaccine. We know it's a ways away, a long way away, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But what do we know? What's the latest on that? So the vaccines, there are some human uh, trials that are going on right now. It normally takes about 10 years mm -hmm. to develop the vaccine. So this process has been expedited for a vaccine for COVID-19. Yeah. You, know, you, you just can't have a medication and use it for one person for it to work. It has to be put through multiple clinical trials. It has to be used on thousands of patients. It has to be proved to, proven to work has to be safe and has to do no harm. Right. And until we have those you know, capabilities, you can't just give a medication to a patient without that sort of uh, no, what, what you know from it. And then we hear about antibodies, right? People that get the disease, they have mm -hmm. these antibodies that potentially could be donated, I guess, through plasma, yeah. right? And, and turned mm -hmm. around to maybe treat people or help people recover from this who are in really Correct. dire circumstances. Talk about how that works and, and what's involved with it sure. at this point. That's actually not new. I mean, that, that came around in the 1918 influenza. Really? Okay, and they actually used it in SARS. And again, your body's immunity uh, system is defined to be like your defense system. Mm -hmm. It brings the white blood cells in, they release these antibiotics, they linger in the plasma. And so the thought is, if we can introduce them into someone who is sick with COVID from a person who's already recovered and have those free-floating antibodies in, they may recover faster. Their body might be tricked to thinking, while well, we have these fighter cells here, let's go ahead and, feed, uh, and defeat this infection. So I think New York has already started some of these trials already for very ill patients with life-threatening COVID infections. And so that's definitely something to look out for. You made a very interesting observation as we were talking about the new numbers coming in. We said them to the doctor in the commercial break, and you made an, an interesting observation. We hit 1,554 cases, yes. 1,554 cases in South Carolina. And you said that was interesting because? I think DHEC's projections from last week, I think they were tracking us to reach 1,500 by April 4th, and we're at April 2nd right now, so we're, we're a little bit ahead of where we should be, and, and that's still saying we need to do more. We need to really be at home. We need to be cleaning our hands. We need to be, you know, doing the right things, especially in this time. All right, Dr. Cedric McFadden, we'll see mm -hmm. you with viewer questions. If you have one, go to the 7 News Facebook page and add yours to the list, and we'll be talking about those live at 5. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to check in with Malachi.